What's up guys, this is Rasim from RossmerTech.com. How you guys doing? Are you well? Hopefully you're well. I'm doing well. Now, I'm happy. The reason I'm happy is because I'm on vacation. I'm officially on vacation right now. And the vacation's half over. I have another three or four more days left. Yeah, I need it. I needed to catch up on my sleep. Today, I already slept like 13 hours. I've never slept 13 hours before. Now, the vacation's like half over and I already shot two videos. This video is gonna be the third video. Now, what are we gonna do in this video? We're gonna water cool a Latte Panda. Unfreaking believable. If you guys don't know, Latte Panda is a single board Windows 10 computer that has Intel. The people behind Latte Panda sent me a review sample. I'm really grateful for them. And I did reviewed it. I compared it to the Raspberry Pi 3. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get started with the video. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the Latte Panda. On the front here, this is the plate that's covering the RAM. And on the back here, this is the CPU and the flash storage in the back. So what I'm gonna do is remove these plates in the front and the back. Then I'll come back once I finish doing that. All right guys, so I removed all those metal plates. As you can see here, this is the top. This is where the RAM is. And if you flip it around here, this is where the CPU is. It was easy to remove. And you just lift up the plate and it was really easy to remove. So now what I'm gonna do is, this is the back, this is where the CPU is. This is the CPU die right there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these water blocks right here. These are the same water blocks I used in a Raspberry Pi 3 water cooled build. I have a bunch of those. I have uh, double-sided adhesive uh, tape. That's uh, thermal transfer. It's made specially for these type of uh, water blocks. I'm gonna put them in each chip location, both sides, as many chips as I can cover. Then we're gonna water cool it. All right guys, so these are the water blocks that I'm gonna use in this build. I'm gonna use six of them. I'm gonna cover six of the chips, the three chips there. I'm also gonna do the CPU here and these two flash chips here. Links to everything will be in the description, but uh, the water blocks from AquaCool, this is the MCX Copper Edition, and the adhesive uh, pads are also from AquaCool. All the links will be in the description. All right, guys, as you can see, I installed all those water blocks here. These are the AquaCool water blocks, MCX, Copper Edition. I installed them in the front and I installed them in the back. Now, most of the chips that get hot are covered, so I can't wait to set this up. So in the next part, we're gonna install the water pump combo. We're gonna install the radiator. We're gonna install all the tubing and everything. We're gonna test it out. Then we're gonna see how cool we're gonna get the temperatures once we water cool the latte panda. All right guys, so on this table here, I have all the stuff that we're gonna need to get this build started. Now I'm reusing most of the parts from my water cooled Raspberry Pi 3 build, my ultimate water cooled Raspberry Pi 3 build. In this build, we're not gonna actually put this in any enclosure like we did with our ultimate water cooled Raspberry Pi 3 build. This is just to test out to see if it works. If it works, we're gonna do an ultimate water cooled Latte Panda build. So let's get started. All right guys, let's start off with this res pump combo it's not that expensive i think i paid like 70 bucks for it it's from thermal take and i used this in my last build the ultimate water cooled raspberry pi 3 build i like it it's freaking powerful i'll leave a link to this res pump combo in the description all right guys so this is the radiator we're going to use in this build it's the same radiator we used in our last build our ultimate water cooled raspberry pi 3 build it does the job well and it's from ek it's the cool stream SE, so I recommend it, the link will be in the description. All right guys, so this is the Latte pan that we're gonna use in the build. I already put six water blocks on six of the chips that get hot here. I got one on the CPU, I got two on the memory, that's flash memory, and I got three on the RAM. The tubing we're gonna be using for this here is this five thirds tubing. We're gonna be using two sides of tubing. We're gonna use this and this bigger one here. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna convert the bigger one to the, to the smaller one in a second. All right guys, so this is the power supply. This is what's gonna power all this here. This is the Pico power supply and it's one of the smallest power supplies you can find. I used this in our last build. I did a separate video on this Pico power supply if you guys wanna check it out. One of the adapters that, that I got connected to this Pico power supply is this 22 pin to this power switch. This is gonna allow us to turn on and off everything, including the Pico power supply. This Pico power supply will allow us to power our res pump combo, the fan, and it'll power the Latte Panda as well. Now, how are we gonna power the Latte Panda? I got this uh, adapter here. This is a USB 5 volt to Molex. There is a Molex connector on the Pico power supply. All I use is one of those adapters. All right, guys, and I also got one Molex to three pin. The three pin's gonna power our fan here. I'm gonna show you the fan. It's also gonna power the res pump combo. So everything will be powered using this Pico power supply. And again, we're gonna use this switch to turn everything on and off. All right guys, so finally we have this fan here. I have a 120 millimeter fan. I used this in the last build. And this fan is powered by Molex. The Pico power supply has a Molex connector. That's how I'm gonna power this. All right guys, so what I have here, this is a divider here. And I have here a fitting attached to this. This is G quarter threading, both sides. You can plug this side, you can add another one of these fittings. What this is gonna allow us to do, here I have five tubes. 
it divides this into five tubes. You could block them off like I did with these caps, or you can take them off and add this five thirds tubing. I'm gonna use all of this to get this loop to work. Once I finish putting everything together, I'm gonna to show you guys the end result. All right, boys, it's finally done. I'm freaking happy. It looks freaking sick. If you guys like how it came out, please like this video. I know you guys really like it, but I'm, I, I really like it. I, I'm amazed. I, I didn't think it was gonna come out so good. All I have to do now is connect the power supply, fill it up with coolant, and test out its performance. All right, guys, so this is how the whole loop works. Basically, we have this thermal take. This is the res pump combo, and this res pump combo has a G and a quarter threading, so I'm using a G and a quarter fitting. I don't remember the size of this tube. I'll leave a link in the description, but it's a bigger tube. So another G a quarter fitting here, which is going to this splitter here. So basically what this adapter does, it converts this bigger cable into smaller cable. This is five thirds tubing here. And here we have the water blocks. I have six of them, right? So from this end, I have one of these tubes, five thirds tubes going into one end of each water block, right? And uh, this water block has two ways you can connect to one in and one out. And the out I have connected to this one here. This is another splitter. And this is basically gonna convert this uh, smaller cable into this bigger cable. Bigger cable is gonna go into this radiator here. And this radiator is gonna come out through here and go back into the res pump combo. So that's how the loop is gonna work. Hopefully you guys understand, it's a lot going on. All right guys, just to show you, both sides of the Latte Panda is water. I have six of these water blocks here, three of them in the back. One of them is the CPU, two of them are the flash storage. And the front here, this is where the RAM is. So all of this is getting liquid cooled now. Once we fill it up, start it up, we can test it out. All right guys, now it's time to fill up the loop. I'm gonna use this red coolant right here and let's fill it up. I'm going to turn it on so it fills up the other parts. All right, guys, so I'm happy with this flow rate, and there are no leaks that I can see. I'm going to fill it up to the top, then we can test this out. All right, guys, so everything's capped off and ready to go. I know you guys are probably wondering. You guys are looking at that radiator and fan. You're thinking, there's no airflow. It's right on top of the table. How, how, how is there any airflow? So when I test this out, when, when I, when I uh, switch to the next scene, I'm going to move that radiator and fan to the edge of the table so there will be some airflow. Don't worry about it, guys. So if you don't see it in this video, it doesn't mean that uh, there will be no airflow. Th that uh, radiator and fan will be at the edge of the table so it will get plenty of airflow. Don't worry about that. Please, guys, don't troll me. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. All the links to all the products will be in the description. There's gonna be a part two to this video. In part two, we're going to do all the testing. We're gonna run the benchmarks. We're gonna get all the tests and we're gonna compare it to it with water cooling and without water cooling. And we're going to compare it to a Raspberry Pi 3. So stay tuned for that video. If you guys are excited for that video, give me a like in this video. I know you guys are really into it. Now, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rasim from RossmerTech.com. And thank you for watching.